So this is the first time you're in the forest monastery? Yes. Yes. <sighs> India doesn't have any forest monasteries. Mm-hmm. India does not have any forest monasteries. It's a big country. Ah, the Dhamma is here in Thailand. <laughs> it used to be in India, yeah? Yeah. And then the Indians disrespected the Dhamma and then it went to Thailand. <laughs> now, I'm waiting for the Thais to disrespect the Dhamma and then go somewhere else, yeah? <laughs> That's the way it is, yeah. <clears throat> the younger Thais are not so interested in the Dhamma anymore, yeah. They are mostly interested in money, yeah. Money, money, money makes the world go around, yeah. <clears throat> you finished? Not what? Is it okay? Yeah, go, go ahead, yeah, go ahead and and do it. Probably put it a little bit back, yeah. So what is so important in our life, yeah? Getting a degree, getting a job, having a family, raising children and then dying. We are born and then we die. You can also say we are born to die, because if we are not born then we don't die. A forest monastery is a very different place. And uh, if it is a forest monastery in the line of Lumpur Man, yeah, it is, it's a bit unusual. Yeah? <clears throat> when you think about yeah, founding a forest monastery in India, I mean, you have to have a teacher there and you have to have because that at least, yeah, were trained in, in Thailand for five years. Yeah. Normally, yeah, the training of a monk, yeah, just to, to remind you, it is not an easy job. Yeah. The first five years you are co- under constant observation of your teacher, yeah, and you cannot leave without permission. <clears throat> the only way is to leave you know, in, the, in these five years, asking for permission to leave and, and go to another teacher, yeah, <clears throat> or just disrobe, yeah. These are two options. Yeah? If you really want to ful- <clears throat> fulfill your training, then you have to stay five years, yeah, and it can be with your upachar, with your uh, monk's father, yeah, upachar, yeah, or it, it is with your teacher, yeah. And then the next five years, until you are ten, until you have ten pansa, you still under the guidance of a teacher, but not all the time. Yeah. <clears throat> and even nowadays, I mean, most of the bhikkhus don't, don't care about this rule. But it is in the Vinaya, yeah? And if you want to become proper monks, then you have to follow the Vinaya, yeah? And that is what is normally done here in, the <coughs> in these line of monasteries, yeah? 
when there was a monk coming to see Lungta Mahaboa, you know, and he had only two pansa, he asked, where's the letter of your teacher? Huh? And if he didn't have, you know, he was chucked out, yeah? They are not monks, yeah? So that, it is tough, yeah? It is tough for the first ten years, yeah? Uh, for the first five years it is very tough, and for the next five years, yeah? It's still training, and only after ten years, then, then you're called Achan or teacher or whatever, yeah, in Thailand, yeah? Then you have finished your training. Hmm? Re remember that, yeah? I mean, becoming a bhikkhu is not easy, yeah? Living the life of a bhikkhu is not easy. We have to, we have to respect the 220 roots, yeah? Living in a monastery as a pakao, yeah? Like, like you are now, you know, it is, it is easier, yeah? You can leave any time, but when you stay here in the monastery, I mean, you, you still have to keep the eight precepts, yeah? <clears throat> not eating after noon or, you know, following out the monastery here, that means one meal a day, yeah? And after that, there is no, there is no food, yeah? I mean, no soy milk and, and things like that, or apples or fruits or things, yeah? <clears throat> Just like what you probably seen in the afternoon, I mean, leaves and, and sometimes some cheese, yeah? And that's it. Yeah? And tea and coffee. Hmm? No sexual conduct, yeah? That is the that is then the fifth the, the third precept, you know, changes into no sexual conduct. Yeah. No eating is the sixth. What is the seventh? No sleeping on high beds and uh, no music and no shows, yeah. <clears throat> so and while while you're here in the monastery, I mean it is clear that you respect the rules, yeah. Otherwise go. You have to leave. The forest tradition is all about practice. Eh? So, I mean, from the morning, from the moment we wake up, yeah, we are with our meditation object. Be it the Buddha, the mental repetition of the word Buddha, yeah, or be it, <coughs> be it the Anapanasati. We don't waste our time thinking about this or that, that. And one general rule here, you know, in the monastery, everything is done quietly, fast, and without, yeah, <clears throat> and with sati, yeah. So no talking, please. Yeah. We want, yeah, I mean, our, when, when you practice, you know, you hear somebody talking constantly, yeah, and that is already enough, yeah? Talking to somebody else, you know, will just, you know, amplify this kind of talking, yeah? If you have any questions, you always can ask me in the morning, you know, or at the times of the talk, yeah? Hmm? But please, yeah, don't talk, yeah? It helps you. It's all for you. It's all for your sake, yeah? <clears throat> you understand that? Yeah. It will be difficult, yeah? We're not used to it, yeah. <clears throat> Asians, yeah, no, love to talk, yeah. <clears throat> they can talk, yeah. So, <laughs> but they can talk for 24 hours <laughs> without getting tired, yeah. And I don't think Indians are very different from that, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Some of the Westerners are more quiet, so I mean, it is not so difficult, yeah. When you close your eyes, I mean, you hear, you know, you hear this voice that constantly tells you, you know, what? or thinks about this, thinks about that, thinks about the future, thinks about the past, yeah? And this is the, this is the voice that we have to replace, yeah? And that, it, that won't be easy, yeah? But our patience is there, you know? We are always here, no matter what, yeah? No matter where the chitta is going, yeah? We just bring it back, yeah? We don't ask why it went there, or how it went there, or, you know, or we, don't <clears throat> we don't punish ourselves, you know, ah, I'm, not, I'm not suitable. No, yeah? we just go back. Whatever thought, whatever memory comes into the mind, the moment we know that there's a thought, there's a memory, we just return to the breath at the tip of the nose or to the Buddha. Yeah? 
and then return again, and then return again. Eh? And you will see for, for weeks, you know, or maybe for months, you know, the mind still will go out, yeah? And then we still bring it back, yeah? Huh? If you remember, if you rem remember when you're born, yeah? I mean, you had to train this body. This body couldn't do anything when it came out of the womb, huh? Remember that? Yeah, I mean, it started, you know, first, you know, with the hands, you know, then with the feet, yeah? <clears throat> And then after a while, you know, it learned how to walk, yeah? How long did it take us, yeah? A year, yeah? Or one and a half years, yeah? Then we started to learn to talk, because this body doesn't know anything. It cannot walk on its own. It cannot, it cannot speak on its own, yeah? And then, you know, then we went to school and learned and learned and learned how to think, yeah? And how long did that take us, you know? Huh? At least nine years in most of the countries, yeah? And then if you go to university, even more, yeah? And then we are finished, yeah? <clears throat> After 16 or 18 years, yeah, we are finished with training this body, yeah? And then we can use it, yeah, in full strength, maybe for 30 years. And then it starts to decline. We train it for 15, 16 years. We can use it for 30 years. Huh? And then we have to wait, slowly watching the decay of this body for 40 years, huh? until it really gives up the last breath, you know, and then we die. Hmm? And because it's so much fun, we want the next body. Huh? <laughs> we can't even wait to get the next body. Yeah? Sometimes, you know, especially if we get older, yeah? When we get older, we don't, we, we don't remember the times when we were born. We don't remember the times when we, when we trained this body, when we went to school or when, when we learned to walk or talk. Yeah? I mean, how frustrating is this to learn to walk or talk? Yeah? It is frustrating and there's a lot of dukkha. <clears throat> and until we, we can use it, you know, until it is strong enough, yeah? yeah? When we are 16 or 18, yeah, and then it's strong enough, and then we finally can do whatever we want to do, yeah. For, for 30 years, maybe 30 years, yeah. For most of the people, not all, yeah. And then, and then we have to watch it decay, yeah. And that's what we call life, yeah. Remember that, yeah. And this body, I mean, if you, if you now listen very carefully, yeah, you know, this, that this body cannot be us, yeah? Somebody must sit in this body and program this body. Huh? No? In a car, the car doesn't drive on its own, yeah? yeah? And if you remember, I don't know how it is in India, but at least in, uh, in Europe, you know, we learn how to drive a car, yeah? <laughs> so we go to, try, uh, to the driver's school, yeah? Most of Asia probably as well, yeah? But the car doesn't go without the driver, yeah? And that is the important aspect, you know, in Buddhism, the chitta is the driver of the body, yeah? And it programs this body, because it wants it, you know, it loves it, you know, it adores it, yeah? <clears throat> and you can't get enough of it, yeah? This life we are this, in the next life we become this, yeah? Just like in this life we change our mind, huh? I studied chemistry, no, I want to study physics, yeah, and then I study physics, ah, yeah, I mean, but I'm more in engineering, so I, yeah. We change our mind all, all our life, yeah? yeah. Sometimes, you know, we want to have a family, then we have the family, we don't want to have a family, and so on, yeah. We do change our, our mind, yeah. <coughs> and so is it with this life, and with the next life, and the next life. And how many lives have we lived already? Uncountable, huh? and not only you know. I mean, it would be it would be nice, you know, if we have lived most of the time, you know, in the heaven and on on the human realm. But actually, most of the time we spend in hell, huh? Because we and you remember, you know, when 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 you're young, when you're sixteen or eighteen. I mean, you forget about the five precepts, and you go against the five precepts, yeah. And if you go against the five precepts, I mean, what awaits us is hell, yeah? And it is so difficult to climb up to heaven, yeah? And it's so difficult, you know, the Lord Buddha 
teaches us it's so difficult to get a human birth. Huh? Didn't he say that? Yeah. I mean, if you studied a little bit of Buddhism, you know it. It's very difficult to become a human life or to get a human life. Then, when we have a human life, it is very difficult to find the true, true religion or the true sasana. Yeah. <clears throat> and yeah. And then the last thing that is very difficult, I mean, once we find the true sasana, to find an arahant, you know, or to find the Buddha. Yeah. And the ties are so lucky, you know, I have so much merit. I mean, the, the, the Arahans were everywhere in Thailand, huh? Yeah? I mean, there were at least hundred, yeah? I don't know how many, probably some, we don't even know that there are, there are Arahans, yeah? In Chiang Mai, in Udon, you know, in Ubon, in Sakonakon, yeah? And even in Bangkok, yeah? Arahants, yeah? <coughs> and what did the Lord Buddha say? You know, where, wherever there is a true teaching, there is Sodapana Sakadakami Anakami Arahant, yeah? And if there is no true teaching, you know, there is no Sodapana Sakadakami Anakami Arahant, yeah? So, I mean, don't, don't waste the time, don't waste your life, you know, with doing this or doing that, yeah? Now you have the opportunity, yeah? You are born in time. Most of you are born in Thailand, or some of you are born in Thailand. Don't waste the opportunity. Yeah? If you want to do something, you know, postpone it to the next life. Yeah? Maybe in the next life you don't find this asana, and then we just can do whatever we want to do. Yeah? But now that we have found the true asana, let's do the utmost, yeah? put our utmost effort into, you know, into the practice to get rid of these obnoxious kilesas that constantly tell us what to do, what, what not to do, what to like, what not to like, yeah? What to have and what not to have, yeah? Isn't that, yeah? They, they determine our life, yeah? Now I want to go there, yeah? And then we say, yes, my Lord, yeah, let's go there. I like this, yes, my Lord, I like this, huh? I don't like this, yes, my Lord, I don't like this, yeah? And who is this Lord? Yeah? Avicca. Huh? <clears throat> Avicca, the mastermind of this universe, yeah? And he, yeah? I mean, he doesn't come personally. I mean, he has his, he has his soldiers, yeah? yeah? And the soldiers are called the Kalesa, yeah? <clears throat> and these Kalesas constantly keep us on on the toes, yeah? Need to do this, yeah? And then we run, yeah? I'm tired, and then we go to bed. I'm hungry, then we go to eat, yeah? Never question, who are you? Who are you to tell me, huh? Who are you to tell me that I'm tired, yeah? If you're tired, go to bed, you know, and I practice, yeah? It's our enemy, and we don't even realize that it's our enemy because this enemy constantly tells us it's us. Yeah? It's me, it's mine, it's myself, yeah? Hmm? If it is your thoughts, yeah? Then you can stop them, turn them off, yeah? But can you do that? No, because it's not your thought. They still come and come and come and come and come and come, yeah? Hmm? The same with memories, yeah? Sometimes they come when we want to, Sometimes they don't come when we want to. Most of the time they, they come when we don't want to. Yeah? So how can we call this me, mine, or I? Huh? <clears throat> the body, the same thing. Yeah? I explained it before. Yeah? I mean, there's something, the chitta, that sits in the body you know, and drives the body and moves the body because when the chitta is asleep, just like when the driver and the car is asleep, you know, the body doesn't move. Yeah? And we can experience all these things. Yeah? If, if our samadhi, <coughs> if our samadhi is good, then we can experience it. If our samadhi is not good, then then we have to develop it until it becomes good, and then we can experience. It. Because if it if we go, you know, samadhi, there are three 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 stages of samadhi. One that is rare, yeah. That's called Kanika Samadhi, and Kanika Samadhi means we just dip very for a very short moment or for, for, for a blink of the eye into the deep Samadhi and then we come out again. Yeah? 
The other one, the, the normal samadhi, supachara samadhi or excess samadhi, and that is where thoughts and, and memories stop. Yeah? And when thoughts and memories stop, what kind of world is that? We don't even know. Yeah? Kogido ergo sum. I think, therefore I am. If I don't think, I am not anymore. And that's exactly what is happening. There's the world of experience, but nobody takes hold of it. Nobody likes it. Nobody dislikes it. I mean, we got rid of this voice yeah? for a short term. And that's called Upachara Samadhi. Yeah? There's no future. There's no past. Yeah? There's no fear. There's no loneliness. There's nothing. There's, uh, most of the time, there's just happiness. Yeah? Or peacefulness or stillness. Yeah? Depends on the character of each person, what he experienced. Yeah? And why, why, why are we not doing it? Why, why do we look for happiness in buying this thing or buying that thing or get this or get that? Or, yeah? Why? Because we don't know the way to the heart. Yeah? Or because we have lost the way to the heart. Yeah? Hmm? If you find the way to the heart, everything is in here. Yeah? Happiness is in here. Yeah? But also unhappiness. Yeah? There's also greed, hatred and delusion, yeah? But it is here, yeah? It has nothing to do with the people, you know, or the situations outside, yeah? Hate has nothing to do with outside. But we are constantly fooled, yeah? We see a person here and we get angry, you know? We see a person doing this and we get angry, yeah? Hmm? Or we see a person and fall in love, you know? I mean, it has nothing to do with this, you know, the, the, the love and the hate, you know, arises here in the heart, yeah? But we are fooled by it, yeah? just like we are fooled by projections. Yeah? By a slight projection, you know, who fools us that, we, that there is something. Yeah? When we go in and touch it, there's nothing. Yeah? <clears throat> well, we have to wait until virtual reality is coming. And, yeah, maybe. But even then, you know, we go in there and, and touch it and nothing is there. There's nothing there. It all arises here in the heart, yeah? And that is the practice. We go here to the heart and find the thing, yeah? So Upachara Samadhi is the most common Samadhi, yeah? I mean, it is the thing that we need. It is the thing that we absolutely need to develop before we can develop anything else, yeah? <clears throat> Apana Samadhi is deep Samadhi or one-pointedness, yeah? And then, yeah, when we enter one-pointedness, when subject, yeah, I mean... Already, when the eye disappears, that is already a big surprise. Wow. Yeah? But when this whole world disappears, you know, that is even a bigger surprise. Yeah? That is amazing. That is the wonder of, that is the wonder of meditation. Yeah? Or oh, it is a preview of Nibbana. Yeah? When subject and object merges, you know, what can we say? Nothing. The whole world, you know, that exists only in the realm of thinking and experience and, things and sensations, yeah, has disappeared. Because there is nobody noting it. Yeah? Everything is merged into one point. Yeah? And that is called eternity or nibbana or whatever. Yeah? But the problem is we come out. Yeah? And when we come out, everything is the same. Yeah? Nothing has changed. Yeah? Then yeah, slowly comes back our greed, our hate, you know, our love for this, you know, our likes and dislikes and so on. Everything comes back. Yeah? And that's why we need to do some why we need to do investigation. Yeah? Investigation of the things that we believe we are. And what are the things that we believe we are? Yeah? Body. And body, and body, and body, and body, and body. Yeah? And then only comes feeling, yeah? and then comes thought and memory, and then vinyana. Rupa, Vedana, Sanya, Sankara, Vinyana. Yeah? These five things we have to investigate. And, yeah, Remember, the investigation of the body is extremely important because the investigation of the body leads us to Sodapan, leads us to Sakadakami, and when we are finished, we are at the stage of Anagami. Yeah? And only then comes the, uh, comes the investigation of Sanya and Sankara. Yeah? Because in Sanya and Sankara, there is a delusion. Yeah? It's hiding in the Sanya Sankara, the delusion. In the body hides greed and hate, yeah? dislikes and likes. Yeah? Once the investigation of the body is over, there's no more likes and dislikes. Yeah? 
A wonderful word, yeah. And then, after, after the uh, investigation of Sanya and Sankara, I mean then, then the only thing that remains is the mastermind, yeah, Avicca. Yeah? And we tackle that and then we are completely free. So you see the importance of the body investigation, yeah? And when you listen to the talks of Lungda Mahabhava, he mostly talks about body investigation, yeah? But of course he also says that Samadhi is important, yeah? And for, for, especially for the Westerners who, who start to th- who think a lot, you know, I mean, samadhi is the first thing that they have to learn. Yeah? You, have to, you have to be able to arrest your mind before you can put it to work. Huh? I mean, if you work uh, in your life, yeah, you get tired and you need food. Yeah? If you don't have food and if, if you don't have sleep, you know, you can't, you, you, you stop. You have to stop working after two or three days. Yeah? It's impossible, yeah? So, if we want to do the work, you know, then the work is the investigation of these five khandhas or these five groups, yeah? Then we have to have a, a, a place where we can rest the mind, yeah? Where we can completely set it free, yeah? And that is the upachara samadhi, yeah? So, most of the people, yeah, can't get into samadhi, especially when they come from the West. They can't get into samadhi because it's so difficult, yeah? <clears throat> so, they start to think about, yeah? Think about the body, think about feeling, think about not self, you know, anatta, yeah? And then they assume they are not self, so it doesn't really matter what I do, yeah? Welcome to hell, yeah? Because that's where they end up. Now, we first have to rest the mind, we have to be able, yeah, to go into samadhi, yeah? And to rest there at least for 10 or 15 minutes, you know, without the mind going anywhere else, yeah? That is the minimum. And then we can start a little bit of investigation. But we still have to do the samadhi. Yeah? And even if, we do, even if we do investigation, once, once we are good in samadhi, even if we do investigation for seven or eight hours, we still have to rest the mind in samadhi for two or three hours. Yeah? It, is, it is absolutely necessary. And everybody you know, who works, yeah? who, who has... A, who makes a living in the world, knows, I mean, he has to have food and he has to have sleep, yeah? Otherwise he can, his work will not be fruitful, yeah? And that is the same thing, yeah? So don't start, you know, investigating this or investigating that, yeah? The first thing is, and it, is, it will be very difficult, especially, you know, if you've never done it, to bring the mind to one point, and that be the tip of the nose where you feel the breath, anapanasati, we don't follow the breath, yeah? Just know the breath goes in, know that the breath goes out. Or we mentally repeat Buddha. Or if it is too difficult, put with breathing in and do with breathing out. Yeah? And when the mind goes out, okay, don't worry, just bring it back. And then bring it back. Yeah? Bring it back. Just like we learned, remember, yeah? meditation is just like learning to walk. Yeah? We get up, we fall over. Yeah? And Does a little child say, Mommy, Mommy, I can't walk? Yeah. <laughs> After three days, no, it's so difficult, you know, I hit my head, you know, it, it, it hurts. Yeah? No, we want to walk, and that's why we can walk, every one of us. Yeah? And if you want to meditate, you will be able to meditate, yeah? and you will be able to read samadhi, at least Upachara samadhi. Yeah? If you're good at it, you, you might be able to reach Apana samadhi. But that is, that is even more difficult. Yeah? But Upachara Samadhi is enough. Yeah? But it needs a lot of patience and endurance. Yeah? I mean, just bring the mind back. Don't even worry about where it went. The moment you realize it went out, go back and go back and go back and go back and go back. Oh, it's so boring. Yeah? That's what comes up. Yeah? And who says that? Yeah? You instantly have to say, who are you? Huh? Huh? Who says that? Huh? If you find it boring, go out and play, you know, and leave me alone. Yeah? <laughs> yeah? You have to understand one thing in the practice, and it is very important that you understand it, that this voice is not you. Yeah? What did the Lord Buddha said? You know, the principle are not, that's not me, that's not mine, that doesn't belong to me. Whatever I can see, whatever I can experience cannot be me. Yeah? I mean, everybody knows in the, in the language is subject and object, yeah? I see this flower, yeah? I'm not this flower. 
But I see my hand and then instantly I assume this is my hand, yeah? Why is this not me, yeah? Why is the flower not me? I see it just the same way as I see my hand. <clears throat> just like I experience or see or, or know that there is a thought, yeah? Who knows that there is a thought? We never think about these things, yeah? Because nobody teaches us, yeah? Nobody in the school teaches us that there is something, you know, inside that knows that there is a thought, knows that there is a memory, yeah? Knows that there is a feeling, yeah? Or knows that there is a body, you know? Body is more obvious, yeah? <clears throat> so this anatta, this principle of anatta is very important, yeah? So whenever a voice comes in and tells you, yeah, now I should do, you know, I mean, or I'm not sitting straight enough, you should sit straight, you know, or you should do it, you know, you should go to this left point or this right point, yeah? It's a kilesas, yeah? yeah? They try to disturb us, yeah? It, they are, the kilesas are just like little children, yeah? Who who love to disturb their parents. Yeah? Yeah? Whenever the parents are very quiet, you know, they come and tickle here and tickle there and do this and do that, make some noise so that the parents get aggravated. Yeah? And that's the same with us. Yeah? The Kilesas are just like these little kids, you know, constantly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm? <clears throat> or when, when, when you ever see, you know, a mom, you know, with a little kid or father, you know, going into in the shopping mall. This, you know, if she doesn't get it, you know, she cries, yeah. And that's the same with the kilesas, yeah. But they not only can cry, you know, they can induce some very severe pain, yeah. Because they're, they're, also, they're also the masters of this body, you know, and the master of feelings and the master of, uh, of thoughts and memories. So they bring up these disturbing memories, yeah. Then they bring up this memory, you know, and then the next question they ask is, where is this memory coming from? Why do I have this memory now? Don't care. Just go back to the Buddha. Just go back to the Buddha or just go back to the breath. Don't care. Yeah? That is very important. That is something that we really have to learn. Yeah? Not being, not getting disturbed by anything. Yeah? Just, yeah, okay. And then you have to overcome boredom, then you have to overcome restlessness, then you have to overcome sleepiness, yeah? Because these are also, yeah, hindrances on our part, yeah? So it is in the beginning, you know, until we really get a foothold into samadhi, it won't be easy, yeah? <clears throat> But whoever is still diligent enough, you know, I mean, he can do it, yeah? Everybody, yeah? You went to university, yeah? If you didn't want to, to finish, you know, I mean, yeah, you wouldn't finish, yeah. But you wanted to, yeah. So, whenever we want something, we can do it, yeah. The power of the chitta is actually limitless, yeah. If it can do whatever it wants to, yeah. But, you know, it won't be easy, yeah. Just like, you know, people who go to university, you know, some people understand it very quickly, others very slowly. And some, some have to spend four years, others have to spend eight years, yeah, to get the same degree, yeah. And that's the same with us, yeah. For us, you know, some people here yeah, can can do meditation within half an hour, other people, you know, yeah, need need ten years, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Or maybe only seven days. That really depends. And it only depends on our effort and determination, yeah. If we if we sit down and say, nothing is going to disturb me, I'm only with my Buddha, yeah. And this is a good resolve, then we can reach samadhi very easily. Yeah? But we are constantly sway out by, by this thing or that thing or this memory or this thought. Yeah? Oh, now I have to think about this. Yeah? Oh, I have to remember this. No, we don't have to remember anything. We don't have to think about anything. The only thing, yeah, when we do Buddha, we think about Buddha, 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 Buddha. Yeah? Or when we do the breath, you know, we, we know about the breath. But that is only, for, for, for the beginning, it is only concentration. We, we, we only train concentration. The next part, you know, of samadhi training is to training the sati. Sati, this awareness, yeah? being aware of what is going on in our heart. Yeah? So, how do we train the sati? By knowing how the breath is. Is it the in-breath? Is it the out-breath? Is the in-breath yeah? smooth? Is the in-breath rough? Is it deep? Is it shallow? Yeah? Or is it long? Is it short? This is sati, this knowingness about the object that we observe. The same thing for the Buddha. Is it fast? Is it slow? Is it, you know, is it deep? Is it shallow? Yeah? 
That is something that we have to develop. Yeah? Hmm? Some people are just happy with concentration because, I mean, nothing is there, but that's not enough. We need the sati, we need the torchlight, otherwise we can't see what, what is in the dark. Yeah? And sati panya are the two, two weapons who can destroy any kind of kilesa. Yeah? If you only have panya, you cannot. Yeah? Because sati is, you know, focusing on one object and panya investigating this object. Yeah? So sati is the thing that, is, that we need to develop. Yeah? But first of all, we need to develop concentration. Yeah? And once the concentration is steady, then we, do need, we develop this awareness about the object that we observe. Yeah? And that is developing sati. Yeah? And that is very difficult. Because once the mind is quiet, we love to stay with the quietness. Yeah? And then there's no sati. No sati. Yeah? We can stay there for ten years, no sati develops. Yeah? And that, that is a big problem, especially for younger generation who are constantly on their smartphones, you know, I mean, SMS this, SMS that, look up this, look up that. Yeah? I mean, there's, it's very difficult for them. For all the people, we are like me, you know, they hadn't. What did we have, you know, when we were growing up? We had a forest to play in. Yeah? We didn't even have TV. Yeah? Huh? Phone? Yeah. <clears throat> no. All these distractions that we have nowadays, and now this distraction is all in one pocket, you know, it's called smartphone. Yeah. And everybody carries it around, yeah? And everybody reacts, you know, when it is ringing, yeah? Huh? I mean, ask your father, you know, I mean, when the phone was ringing and he wasn't at home, he didn't know, yeah? When somebody came, you know, to his house and he wasn't at home, who cares, you know? And it was, it was much easier, you know? It was much quieter and not so hectic, yeah? And nowadays our life, you know, the more, the more these technologies we have, the more it becomes more and more hectic, yeah? We don't have time to think, yeah? And especially we don't have time to think about the important things in our life. What am I doing? Why am I doing this? Yeah? What is the result of my doing? Because we are constantly forced, you know, to act or react very fast, yeah? And the smartphone is the worst thing, yeah? Because it, it, it trains us to react, yeah? Not to think, yeah? And that's a problem. Yeah? And this, in our practice, you know, we have to let go of this. Yeah? That's why I don't want any, any tablets or any smartphones here. Yeah? The only thing that you can use is, yeah, I mean, MP3 players. Yeah? And to listen to talks. Yeah? I mean, if you're bored with your practice, just listen to your talk. Yeah? Just listen to a Dhamma talk. Yeah? And then when you listen, just listen with your heart. Yeah? And that Sometimes, you know, when you really can listen, yeah, no matter what language it is, you will understand. Because the heart knows only one language. Yeah. Okay, enough for today, yeah? yeah? So. Understood? No? Malaysia? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How is your practice, huh? Uh, yeah. Ah, we can't let go of our life. Yeah, that's a problem. Cut it off, you know. I mean, we have no, we have hardly any contact. The only contact we have with lay people from outside is in the morning when there's food. Yeah, and that is the worst time yeah, for our practice. Yeah, because we see the food and then we forget everything. Yeah, but after that, it is quiet. <laughs> yeah, and then it's quiet. Yeah. And whatever happens in the world will happen, you know, you can't, <clears throat> you can't prevent it anyway. Yeah? Because you're here. Yeah? If you know somebody drowns, you know, in a lake, you know, uh, 15 kilometers from here just right now, you can't help him. Yeah? So what's the, what's the point of thinking about, it? oh, this poor guy or poor girl, yeah? No point, yeah? Here. Yeah. That is... You, and you will see it over three days, it is really difficult. Yeah. Okay? So, yeah? Yes, Linda, yeah. And we are happy to go back to Brunei, yeah? <laughs>
And the faster, the better. 